Hey, this is Stuart back with Stu Balls Gaming today with the Mars 101 course that we're doing. Um, today is part two of that, and something crazy happened since part one. So as you can see, things have kind of gotten a little bit crazy since we were here last time. So I jumped back in before I started the video and was mining some iron just because this next part of the video is going to require quite a bit of iron. During that, this whatever storm blew in and stuff's blown around and stuff. My, You can see the sun's still up and my solar panels are hardly doing anything. So we're in a really tough spot right now. So we are going to solve this. So in today's video, we are going to mainly focus on upgrading this station into something that's a little bit more suited for the Mars environment. So let's get started. So we're gonna go to the gene menu and we're gonna look up the hydrogen engine, which I don't think I have unlocked yet. So, so the hydrogen engine runs on hydrogen, which means you have to fuel it with ice. And so you've got to have an O2 generator. So, which means that this is a prereq. Oh, I've got that still in my build planner from last time. So I'm going to drag that O2 generator so it creates H2, which then will fuel this hydrogen engine right here and give us power. Because right now, I don't think I can actually run anything. So if I come in here, we're going to pull up the panel. You can see I'm getting about 39 kilo watts and that's the same across to all of them about and if we look at our basic refinery i need 330 to run that and i need 280 in order to run my assembler so i need to create something to get around this so i added it to my build planner so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to add that let's see so I'm going to press G and we need to see kind of what we need, which I don't think I even added it into. So that's our basic refinery. So O2 generator, we're going to add it down to our toolbar. Press control two to open up the next one. We're going to add that down there so we can see that we need some steel plates, construction, large tubes, motors, and computers. Nothing too crazy. So I'm going to come in here, production-wise, I'm going to see if I can even create this. This is going to be a, a push. The only reason, I'll show you the only reason why I can do this in just a minute. Actually, I don't want to create that many, because at this point I don't know when I'm going to be completely out of power. And construction components. So I'm just curious, I, this is the first time I've been in a storm. It doesn't look like anything has been harmed from where I left it. I'd imagine the solar panels could get damaged, but I don't know. It depends on how realistic this wind is. There is like stuff blowing around, which is kind of interesting. But the reason that I can still run my refinery and assembler right now, which really I probably should turn off my refinery unless I absolutely need what I'm refining, I've got quite a bit so I'm actually going to turn off my refinery just to save power so if I go over my battery I can see right now I'm depleted in five hours so that's that gives me a decent amount of time that's running my assembler right now so I kind of if and then if I turn on my refinery again look at my battery I only have two hours so I'm gonna turn that off because if the sun sets, then I have to wait till the sun comes up again before I get any power, depending on what happens with this engine. So, just a good precaution. I like to do that. Okay, so this is our O2 generator. So we can put our hydrogen and our oxygen bottles in here and it'll refill them. It runs on ice. It's pretty simple. Um, so, I want to be able to access it. So, the only port I have available right now, or conveyor port, is this one here. I'm going to press the insert and end buttons, you can see where we've got ports. We've got one on each side here, and then there's one on the end, and then there's one on the top as well. So at this point, I need to grab the material, so hopefully my, yep, it looks like my production has happened. I'm gonna press this uh, withdrawal components from build planner, so then it pulls out exactly what I need for this. And I'm gonna just build that right on the face there. And then I'm going to just 
weld it up real fast. So the important thing to remember as well is this O2 generator is also going to require power in order to convert ice into it. So I already know that I have some ice in over my O2 generator on my survival craft. I remember how I remind in the part one I grabbed some. So I'm going to right click because I don't pull all of it out. I'm just going to pull 2000 out so that I have it. So as you can see my solar panels are actually doing better. It must be in the storms letting up a little bit. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to drop this in here. And if we look at the control panel and we're going to go to the O2 generator, you can see that it requires 500 kilowatts. Um, I'm pretty sure my battery could supply that. <laughs> Currently it's going to take 19 hours to recharge based on those solar panels and my assembler is not running. My refinery is not running right now. It's kind of crazy. So that's that. So now I need to... If I go to my hydrogen engine, I'm going to add, so now I've unlocked this, I'm going to add that to my build planner, add it to my toolbar, and we're going to take a look at it. So as you can see here, we've got two ports on it. We've got one on bottom, and then one on the, the one on bottom, and then one on the front. It's kind of a cool looking thing, you know, it looks like an engine. So, suggestions for placement though. So right now, if I placed it like this, I wouldn't be able to access that bottom port and I'd be kind of in trouble. So if I rotate it around or I can rotate it up, that gives me some options. Looking at this, because I don't want to interfere with my survival craft right now, as you can see it just got the small one, so if I drag it back over here. So if I build out this direction this way, that gives me some free space. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to see what materials I have. So I still need some large tubes, small tubes, and power cells. So I know I need a power cell. I know they said something about small tubes, large tubes. And I'm going to throw an extra power cell in there. Just kind of throw some of the general stuff that you normally need when you're building stuff. I'm actually pretty close to my weight limit if you look down above my toolbar where it says hydrogen engine. Uh, there's that red bar. I'm pretty, actually pretty close to being full weight-wise and cargo-wise. So I need to finish this before... So just to be straight, I can access my stuff. If I fly up on top, there's a port there, and there's also a port on bottom. If I were to dig down, I could access it. Or I can access it here through this gap. So to empty out my inventory, I'm just going to click real fast, and as you saw, it just filled a bunch of the stuff that I already had. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to see if I can collect the rest of what I need for it. Missing construction components, so I'm going to dump what I've got real fast, and come back over here, and I don't have any construction components. Let's move that to the front of the queue, get that done real fast. Something we haven't talked about and why those are getting done is, so we have these tools, so with each new assembler that you get in refinery, or it's just the assembler, so this is the one we're currently using, it's just the normal grinder, normal hand drill, and the normal welder. There is also the enhanced of all those, and then once you get the full on assembler, it also has a, a double, you know, the extra enhanced. But as you can see, it requires some cobalt, some silicon, nickel, these ones don't require that, and so like, if you need to have spares around, you can. If you do die in this mode, that you do spawn with the base model stuff. So let's see if, oh, there we go, we got what we needed. So I'm going to put this up. So hydrogen engines sometimes, I don't know if they fixed it with this latest update, Sometimes they don't turn on right away, and if you ever have a problem with a hydrogen engine, I found that if you save your game, exit to the main menu, and reload the game, after you try the steps that I will show you, then it normally will start when you go back and exit out. So as you can see here, this fan down at the end isn't spinning. The other way you can tell is, if you look in here, normally you should see those go up and down. Oh, it's finally ended, how nice. So nothing's happening yet, so I'm going to go in here and 
and go to control panel and I can see that currently it doesn't have any fields. This is the hydrogen. It has its own storage tank and we also see our current output, our max output. Right now it's on, but yet it's not on, so that's kind of weird. So our, make sure our O2 generator is on and then we're going to turn this off and turn it back on. Nothing. So the other thing we can go check and make sure that our O2 generator still has ice, which it does. So as you can see, it's just not starting. So what we're going to do is we're going to save the game and we're going to exit the menu and we're going to start back in. Let's see if this fixes it. I've had it where sometimes it does this and sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on the the day, I think. If somebody knows how to fix this down below, if you're watching you know what you're talking about, let me know. I'd love to hear it. But now you can see as I've restarted this fan on the end spinning, we've got some pumping action going on there. And so if we come in here, we can see our hydrogen. We're creating five megawatts right now, which is sweet. And we filled a little bit, not a whole lot. The ratio of engines to O2 generators is two to one. So you need two O2 generators per one engine is the way it used to be. It looks like it might be different now that I can create that. It makes me believe that actually with the current game settings we have, one O2 generator is enough to power one hydrogen. It just will not fill, which is fine. I'd at this point, I'm not super concerned about that, but as you can see, we're recharging 32 minutes. That's pretty good, but something to bear in mind. So if we come down here, we're already almost out of ice, like it burned through it that fast. So your O2 generator and your hydrogen engine, it's kind of on this Mars setting. It's a lost cause. It's not a lost cause. Sorry. It's a more difficult route. We know where the ice is and we know we can go get more but we definitely want to try to use the ice more sparingly because as you can see it's already stopped again and but our solar panels are working so let's see do we have if i remember correctly we set up a gps location i guess we didn't so if i remember correctly i'll show you how to set up a gps location again so it shows up on the map I knew it was over here because this is where I was at last time. So I'm going to show you how to set up. So you press K and we're going to go over to the GPS. We're going to do from current position and we're just going to type ice. And now it'll show up on my hood and I will be able to see. So we've got this ice and now I can see my iron, my cobalt. And so I should be able to come down here and pick up my ice. I'm going to mine some more with the left click. And holding down F to pick up all the stuff that it's shooting out, and then I can pick up the stuff on the bottom. And my inventory is full. So I'm going to fly out of my hole real fast. And I'm going to press K. I've got 389 stone. I'm going to drop that. And I'm going to come back down. I just want to make this trip as productive as possible and not waste time because. It's not worth it to carry stone back and forth when I can get stone right next to my base. Okay, so the reason I left my ice over in that is if for whatever reason, so if I press K, I my bottle of hydrogen, for whatever reason, if that gets too low, I do not want all my ice where the O2 generator can get to it because it will eat it all. Because at 8 through 2000, uh, 2000 ice that fast you know I don't I don't need it to uh, continue to just burn through everything and then if I need to go somewhere and I need hydrogen to fly for my jetpack and I don't have any I'm in a world of hurt so and then I end up walking over here and it takes a lot longer but ice is a good way when I fly back with this I'm probably actually going to shut off the hydrogen engine at this point and just let it charge off of the solar panels and work on building more of those. So solar panels are a 
you don't have to put in a whole lot of work in order to, to have power come from them. So we are going to come over here, go to the control panel. We are going to turn this off. I do not want it to burn through all of it. So I've got 3,000 and my battery is charged in six hours. That's not bad. I'm going to turn on my basic refinery again and let it eat up some of that battery power. That means if it's a negative number, it's a very small number, or sorry, not a very small number, it's a very large number. So that could be that it's gonna recharge in essentially over 100 or whatever. The way we can look at that is if we look at our current input is very close to our current output. We're talking like 60 kilowatts difference and to, to recharge you know, our max stored power of three megawatt hours, that's gonna take a long time. So they put negative five when it's a huge number. So that's one of the largest upgrades we can do is adding a second power source in case the first one, our solar cells, does not work out. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I am going to recharge my batteries. As you can see, my batteries were a little low. So that is one of the major changes though that you need to make when you're building a base like this on this environment like Mars. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you if this is the first time you're joining us, please make sure you like and subscribe. And if you have any further questions or if you have ideas for future videos, please link them in the description below or comment them so that I can make those videos. We will continue on with this 101 course addressing this Mars base that we have set up in the survival mode in Space Engineers. Hope you guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you again.